Okay, so I'm starting a new section in my blocks. It's going to be tutorials, video tutorials, because I find those are the best way to learn and easiest way to learn as well. You can just leave it in the background and work on other stuff. So, for this first one, I am going to be using the Mass Effects options in 3S Max 2012, and I'm going to make a mirror shatter when something hits it. Something very much like that. I'm just scrubbing right through the timeline. It's going to be very similar to that, of course, since the dynamics and the way the mirror is broken up, it will be procedural and it won't look exactly the same, but you will get the exact same effect. So for this we'll be using 3S Max 2012. It's needed because I'm going to be using Mass Effects, which is introduced in 2012, as well as I'll be using some free scripts from ScriptSpot. It's Fracture Voronoi and it is beautiful at breaking up objects into many many little pieces. Alright, so it's going to be a simple tutorial and let's get to it. Alright, so first I'm just going to reset my scene. Yes, I want to reset. And I'm going to do some very small housekeeping things. First I'm going to do is set up my units. So we'll go under Customize, Unit Setup, and I use US Standard. You'll probably be sitting at generic units or maybe even metric, but US standard decimal inches is what I will be using for this tutorial. You can use other things, but you'll have to convert them. I just find decimal inches to be the best, especially since we are using mass effects and actual densities and weights for gravity, so it needs to be real world units. Okay. As well, I will be using the mental ray rendering engine just to make it look pretty because I like it. So under rendering, render setup. There we'll go down here, assign renderer, and make sure it's mental ray renderer. Well, well it's already selected for me. Yours will be at probably default scan line, and then we just go and select mental ray, double click on it, and it'll open up and be f perfect for what you need. Now we need to set up our scripts. So go to the place which I've linked below and download the script. You can save it anywhere, but just make sure you can find it easily because you'll just go under Max, Run Script, and the script will be Fracture Voronoi version 1.1. That is the one I'll be using, and that's probably the best one so far. I'll go into a bit more detail about that later. Alright, so let's model out our mirror in the front viewport. I'm going to drag out a box. It's a very simple model. Right-click in the creation of it. Pretty sure you know how to do that. Make 0 0.5 height, width will be 48, and or the length will be 48, and the width will be 72. So it's about 4 by 6 mirror. Now, if you made it in a different uh, viewport first, you might have different numbers for that, but just it's easy enough to figure out that it's 4 by 8 mirror, and 4 feet tall, 6 feet wide, my bad, and uh, half an inch half, yeah, half an inch deep. Alright, so I'm going to zero this out and pull it above the ground plane. You really don't need to do this, but I like doing it anyways because it just makes it look better, in my opinion. Alright, let's name this mirror. And now let's create a different box. That will be its back. So I'll just drag out another box behind it. I'll go like that. And we will set this to be two inches wider on either side, so this will be 52 and then 76 and two inches deep. So that just gives us a bit of room to mess around with making it inset and making it look like a frame for the mirror. Very simple mirror now. Let's actually make this a frame. So I'm going to pull this behind the mirror itself in the top view part. And I'm just quickly going through the viewports with Alt W. It's just a shortcut key to maximize and minimize your current viewports. And I will inset this in about, about an inch. I'm going to go into the vertex mode and actually change it around a bit more at the end because it's not perfectly centered but in the end as long as the person who's watching it doesn't see that it really doesn't matter. So we'll zero you out there. Oh, the height looks a little bit right. Yeah leave it there and move in these. Now what you want to make sure is these things are not intersecting like this because when you use dynamics that can cause some huge huge problems. It will make things explode improperly because there's intersecting geometry 
So usually I leave enough room that it won't, it won't really matter if I'm doing dynamics, but make sure it's small enough so that people can't see it. And also when you select your camera angles, it's very easy to figure out what people like or don't like. That will go in a bit later. Actually, probably not at all. Now let's extrude them back in. Drop back about negative 1.5 inches since it's 2 inches thick. And, alright, now we'll pull this back just to sit inside it like that. Alright, so now we have our mirror. We have our frame, which is around it, and you can see kind of an outline, so we might have to fix that up later, but nothing really big right now. Alright, so after we get all that, we were going to make the baseball that will hit it, or, well, whatever. I just assume it's a baseball because what else do we throw at freaking windows? Alright, now about 2.5 inches in diameter segments, dropping down to 24. We don't need a huge number of segments because it's going to be far away and fast moving. And making sure that you have a, poly a good polygon count is pretty essential no matter what you're doing. It just is better to have a good polygon count. I mean, if you need a higher polygon count, of course, do it. But if you can get away with a lower one, make sure that you use the lower polygons. Now I'm just creating the ground plane, which is just a simple plane, centering it out and scaling it up. This will just make sure that it doesn't look like it's floating in the middle of space when we render it out. So pull it down just below the mirror, and let's make it big. Yeah, about that. Yeah, that looks good enough. So that is going to be our model for our entire scene. I'm going to save this off under my folder and you will find it in your folder. You want to save it wherever you want to. Personally, I would have saved it before this and always save often because there is always a problem with overwriting files, losing files, and problems like that. I already have my file up there, so I'm just going to save it as a different file. All right, so now let's start up breaking our object up and start adding some dynamics into it. Okay. So, first thing we're going to do is run the script that you downloaded. Run script Fracture Voronoia. Just double click on that, it'll open it up. This is a powerful, powerful script. So, what it does is you pick an object right here. And then, from that, after you picked an object, you can set about how many parts you want. So, let's pick the mirror object. And we're going to break it into 20 pieces. That's just what I've made sure that works a while ago. And the material, just keep the new material ID in the new map channels. This means when it breaks up into all the different areas and all the different pieces, it will have the same material number and make sure that it'll work with your materials that you already have in there. Um, and then you have, you can break into 20, but first I'm going to make sure it's a uniform color. This will make it a lot easier for selecting all the pieces at once when I'm wanting to assign a material to it. And I will also select volume cells centers. Bounding boxes, if we go J to show our bounding boxes, you can see this outer edge right here. This is the bounding box. And that bounding box here, this is just the bounding box for the outer frame. And if you center it on that, it might not be a perfect center of the mesh. Volume cell center means makes it sure that it's the perfect center of the mesh. This is probably faster to, to well, break up an object, but this is better. And really, it doesn't matter. It's going to be such small objects, we don't need to worry about RAM and our processing speeds. So, we will select our mirror. As you can see, it's selected mirror. And we will break into 20 pieces. We'll just quickly do that. I'm done in 4 seconds. Let the RAM catch up again. And you can see we have our mirror broken into 20 pieces. Now, next we want to... Oh, I'll undo that. I moved it out of it. Next, we want to see where the ball is hitting it. Because where the ball is going to hit it, I'm going to say the ball is going to hit about here. Where's the ball is going to hit it? There's actually many smaller pieces that shatter. So we're going to select this one. Let's select this piece. And let's break this into about 15 parts. And we'll break into 15. And yours, of course, will look different. So you will have to make decisions on where you want to break and where the ball is going to hit and which ones you want to break down. Usually I just pick three or four or five in the middle near the edge or near where the ball hits to break down into more pieces. So it looks kind of closer to a shattering effect. Alright, so let's select this piece and break into 15. Let's select this piece, break into 15. 
And a few more. Let's do this one. This one's a bit smaller, so I might just break that down into ten pieces. And farther away from the explosion, so the pieces actually might be smaller. So why not just five? Break into five pieces. See them shattered there. This one I kind of like, but I wish it was smaller. So what I'm going to do is actually break it into two pieces. And then from that piece, ah, crap. I did something pretty bad. Which I didn't do is I kept this piece and I broke it again. So there will be overlapping ones. Now I just deleted out that piece. As you can see, there are overlapping pieces. Maybe this piece is the other piece that is there. So make sure before you break an object to select a different object because if you don't you just have to do what I did and delete out the pieces that broke it down and as you can see there is no more pieces behind there is just this one five part piece so select this one make sure I select it and then break into two pieces and now this one I'll break into five pieces make sure that I select this one break into five pieces and then this one Break into five pieces too. So really you just want to have a nice little area around where the ball is going to hit broken down into smaller pieces. It really doesn't matter which pieces or how many but usually the smaller pieces near the area it's going to break down the better. So you got that done. It's all nicely fractured up and that will be our mirror fractures that we will set dynamics to and set the mass effects tools to. Alright so now we will make sure that we'll set up our mass effects. So first, we'll pull this ball back. That will be a kinematic one. We'll talk about that later. I'll close the fracture Vernoy script because we don't need it anymore. And 